All right, let's get to the phones. Emily is up next in Shelby, North Carolina. Emily, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? Emily, I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? So I feel like I have no passion for anything career-wise, and I really don't know what I want to do or how to find my passion. Wow. That sounds really depressing, doesn't it? (laughs) It is. Yeah, but that's not true. What if I told you that that's not true? What if I told you that, that the way I define passion is work that you love to do, a task or task, things that you just look forward to doing when you're in the middle of it, time seems to stand still and uh, uh, you lose track of time and, and, and it produces a result that you get excited about. What if I told you that that's what's really true and either you haven't realized it yet or you haven't experienced enough of life to figure that out. But what if I told you that you actually do have things that you like to do, that you look forward to do. There are actually results that you would like to create in this world. That's mission. And if we look at some of those answers and you start to spit those out, we're going to see some patterns. What if I told you that's true? Um, I'd be pretty excited. I want to know how to figure that out. All right. We're going to figure it out. How long have you been listening to the program? Um, a couple of months. I, I was listening to Dave Ramsey and I kind of found you off of that. Good. Good. Well, welcome. So talent, passion, mission. That's how we begin to get the answer to what do I want to do with my life? But before we break that down, I'm just wondering how old you are now. And then was there a time in your life when you wondered, like a child wonders on Christmas morning, what's under the tree? Have you ever wondered about doing something? Wondered what that would be like? How old are you? And then have you ever done that? Give me those two answers. I'm 20 years old. Um, I actually was going to school for nursing. Um, I went, I got my associate's degree, my prereqs and all that, um, associates of arts. And I actually got into the nursing program and I started working at a hospital and I just realized I hated everything about it. Oh. And I feel like I spent so much time on nursing, I never really gave myself a chance to like, explore other options. Mm-hmm. And, and as I, a result, okay. you're, you're feeling tremendous disappointment and confusion. Yes. All right. So yeah. let's break this down for a moment. Is there any, oh, well, before I do this, is there anything else you wondered about besides nursing? I wondered about teaching, but like, I, I like the idea of working with kids, but it just kind of seems like everything else that comes with the job okay, might great. kind of ruin it. Okay, great. I get that. So let's focus on the part about the kids. Why do you want to work with yeah. kids and forget job title for a second, forget about where in the, in the, marketplace of jobs in the economy that you would fit what kids would you work with who would you want to work with what type of kids what are they dealing with is it just uh, after is it just caring for them and playing with them and creating with them is it something more intense i want to know more about this who, who would you work with what type of kids and and how would you work with them um i really like younger kids like my little i also really thought about doing speech therapy um, my little brother when he was about five or six he never talked so he had speech therapy and I would sit in there and I would watch it and it just you know just like the thought of helping kids that need help in like certain areas I love that it's really interesting to me I love that and uh, let's pause this part of the conversation what did you think you were gonna like about nursing since you said you hated everything about it is that really true Honestly, the the only thing I thought I'd like about nursing was the money. And it's just like, I knew everything about nursing pretty much already. My my mom's a nurse. Two of my cousins are nurses. Oh. And pretty much everybody in my family is a nurse. So I oh. Felt like well, Emily, I now this makes sense. You only wanted to do it because you said it was a good career. And it is. It's a good job. But you never wanted, there was no why behind being a nurse other than the paycheck. So that explains it. Exactly. Well, can I just encourage you? You shouldn't be discouraged about that because you actually chose something because you didn't know me yet. You had to listen to the Ken Coleman show and you made a decision that a lot of people make. That's what they think about work. Work is only this thing I do to live. So I got to go find something that pays me really well. And then you actually get in there and you realize how much you hate it and you're miserable, right? Yeah, exactly. But can I encourage you? You should not be discouraged or confused because it's not in your sweet spot. So the mm-hmm. sweet spot for you, Emily, and for every person on the planet is a, is think of it as a big giant contribution zone in the world of work. Okay. And there are mm-hmm. multiple jobs 
and career paths and even multiple dream jobs for Emily and for Ken. As long as I am using what I do best, my talent, Emily, the things you do best, you've got a list (laughs) of top skills or talents that could be honed into a sharp skill. And so you use those as tools because that's what you do well. And then you find the work you want to do. And let's just say it's working with kids right now because I think there's a pretty clear idea here. And so we go, okay, I want to work with kids. I love listening to kids, helping kids, serving kids, encouraging kids. Is that all true? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, that's passion. (laughs) And then the results of that work, Emily, is mission. Why do I want to work with kids? Because my brother struggled to talk and I saw a speech therapist change his life. That began to awaken something in your heart, didn't it? Mm-hmm, it did. You sat and watched that, and on some level you were fascinated by it, but then it moved yep. your heart, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Do I hear some emotion in you? Yeah. <laughs> I've just been struggling with this for such a long time. Like It, it kind of just feels like I went to school for nothing. Like you I didn't. went for two years. No, you didn't. To, you didn't. You didn't want Listen, Emily, you're 20. You didn't waste your life. If I had a 50-year-old on telling me the same thing, I'd tell them, you didn't waste anything. There's something that Mm -hmm. you gained out of that two years of school experience. Something you gained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You learned something. You know what the good news is? You know know why I'm proud of you, Emily? Why? Because you barely know me. You heard about me by listening to the Dave Ramsey show. You've only listened or watched the show for about two months. And you had the mm-hmm. courage to not only call me and talk about this, but you had the courage to walk away from nursing where a lot of people never would. They'd spend their whole life being miserable because it's a good paycheck. And they'd be worried about what other people think about walking away from a nursing career. They would be worried about not making enough money anywhere else and they would just stick it out. That's not what I teach. That's not what I believe. And I believe, Emily, yeah. that you were put on this earth to pour into children. Now, we got to figure it out. You're not limited, Emily, to being a speech therapist or a teacher. Mm-hmm. And I love how honest you are. By the way, you've told me enough. You don't need to be a teacher because all that other, all that other stuff, you don't want to stand up and you don't want to do lesson planning. True or false? True. You don't want to stand up and speak publicly every day. True or false? Very true. <laughs> you don't want to do paperwork. And deal with parents and all that other crap that comes with being a teacher. True or false? Very, very true, yes. What you want to do is influence the lives of children in a way that makes their lives and their parents' lives better. Is that true or false? True. So how many different ways, Emily, and you don't have to have the answer to this, but would you say that there are multiple different ways that you can influence the lives of kids and their parents to make both parties' lives better. There are multiple ways to do that that you can get qualified and really enjoy. Yeah, I, w- I would say that. I know that. Definitely. So here's your homework assignment. Your homework yeah. assignment is to look into all the different jobs. Let's start with some therapy, occupational therapy, could be physical therapy. I don't care. You just need to look into it. But where it is specialized in helping kids. You may find that you want to do some type of uh Uh, Working with kids that uh, struggle with uh, maybe something severe like autism or something else and they have a clinician who recommends treatment programs and then they need a person who's just actually there uh, carrying them out in the home with the parents and the kids. I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go and you don't need to put that pressure on yourself. But you start to begin to say, okay, who are the kids and here are the questions I want you to write down, Emily, that you got to answer. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Who are the kids I most want to help? Describe them. What's the problem they have or the need or the challenge or the desire? And then what are the solutions that will help solve those problems? Emily, that's all you got to answer. And when you answer that, there are going to be jobs that pop up and you go, oh, ding, ding, ding. There's three different ways I can do this. And now we, now we are clear that's stage one, there are seven stages to meaningful work. Stage one is get clear talent, passion, mission. I also want you to go to my website and get the career clarity guide and just walk through that. 
okay? Because I just it's what we kind of started walking through. And then mm-hmm. I want you to, once you get clear, you're ready to start getting qualified. Okay, so if I wanted to do occupational speech therapy, what are the qualifications? But once I figure that out, I go, how much is that going to cost? And how long is it going to take based on my financial situation? Now I got a goal. And I got a mountaintop, mm-hmm. a professional pinnacle, Emily, that I'm going after, okay? Mm-hmm. And once you get that kiddo, you're getting after it. And you're making connections at stage three. I also want you to go to my website. When you're there getting the curriculum to God, I want you to download the seven stages to meaningful work, okay? It's just a PDF that you can print out, put on your refrigerator or your mirror in your bathroom or your closet door. And I want you to have that in front center where you see it every day so that you know at 20, you've got plenty of time and you have a clear path forward. Do you understand? Yes. Emily, you got this. I'm proud of you. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for calling.